Welcome back to Let's Play Tintin and Tibet. And today, I'm afraid that the mood takes a bit of a drop as Tintin and company finally discover the wreck of the plane that Chang was on. And just look at the, this shot here. There is no way Chang could have survived this plane crash, even if he survived the initial impact, which is extremely unlikely. Look at the massive hole ripped into the side of the aircraft. He couldn't possibly use that for shelter. He'd be dead of hypothermia within hours. Also, that music is very depressing, so I'm going to turn it off right now. What are you trying to do now, Infogrames? Induce your players to suicide? So after that rather sombre cutscene, perhaps it's only f fitting that we get a rather difficult level, although if you've played it a few times, it's not nearly as difficult as it first appears. What you want to do here is all the, run all the way to the right, first of all, to meet up with Taki, who tells you it's dangerous to go alone. Take this! And it gives you a pickaxe or as they insist on calling it in this game, the Ice Axe. Now the Ice Axe has two distinct functions, there's the first one right there. Hold down and press Y and you'll sort of dig into the ground. However, this is not very useful because this only has one uh, use in the entire game, at the end of this level in fact. Now you've got to pick up this sort of metal girder, you can pick it up even though it doesn't look like it, and you've got to place it in front of this metal thing to stop it attacking you. Not that it could probably attack you, it's a metal thing, but you know what I mean. Then you've got to pick up this rope, which is the second required item to pick up in this level. The rope will come in use later on. And if you speak to Haddock here, he'll tell you that he can hear Snowy barking. Unwarranted use of the ice axe, yeah. He can hear Snowy barking. Which is probably because Tintin refused to feed him after the whole Yarksy incident. You know, only drowning in the river. Here's the second use of the ice axe. If you go up to these holes in the ice, I suppose is how you describe them. Tintin will dig in with the axe. When he digs in with the axe, that's your cue to uh, hold up and uh, press Y and Tintin will haul himself up the ice. Now if we approach this rather phallic looking rock, Tintin will drop the rope, assuming of course you've got it. Now tip with this rope, jump towards the edge of it, okay? If you jump towards the top of it, well, well I said the edge, I mean the bottom. If you jump towards the top of it, you will probably fall through it. Not that it kills you or anything, it's just that you'll have to make the jump again. And you are on a time limit here. It's not as strict as some levels that we've seen before. In fact, we're nearly at the end right here. But it is still quite straight. Talk to Snowy, he'll run over to this convenient looking snowfall, strike it once with the ice axe, and the level is over. And as if Snowy hadn't screwed with you enough, now as soon as you enter level 10, the cave, he breaks the bridge to the other side. Me and we have to go around the long way. What the hell do we keep you around for, Snowy? I don't think you've done a good thing since this game began, have you? Well, no, you pointed out the pot of sun, but that's about it. Duck down here so we've got a rolling boulder out of nowhere. And if you need it, there is a health power-up. However, you're going to want to avoid getting unnecessary power-ups if you don't need them. Because if you thought the time... I said the time limit was quite tough. There, I can't speak. I said the time limit was quite tight in the wreck level. It's nothing compared to this. You can actually go and get a one-up if you so wish. But I really, I really, really would not recommend it because the time you take out getting the one-up will probably mean you die anyway of, uh, of running out of time. There are a few uh, hazards to dodge here. Mostly bats and falling icicles. As we've seen, there are also those pebble shooters. Uh, what the heck are those pebble shooters supposed to be anyway? I mean, I, they don't even make any sense. Even in a video game, they don't make any sense. It's a collection of pebbles shooting other pebbles. Whatever, let's just move on. Now, it's very hard to get not get hit by something here. So you're probably best just taking a hit and moving on. Ow, or taking two hits and moving on, thanks to that flipping pebble shooter. Now this bit's kind of tricky. What you want to do is hold yourself up to here, and if you see an icicle shake, fall back down. For the first two, anyway. Afterwards, keep looking at the top of the screen, and if you see an icicle shake, stop moving, wait for it to drop, and continue on your merry climb. That's the last of them. So just continue. <laughs> I said that's the last of them, and it isn't. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so 
So anyway, climb your way all the way up this ice. Boring, I know, but I'm not going to speed it up or put music over it or anything, because we know the end of the level anyway. And this is going to be a short video, because the next level is going to take an entire 10 minutes to complete. Or nearly 10 minutes to complete. So this is your lot. As I said, we are very nearly at the end of the stage. We're going to fuck this bit up. Jump on this boulder, take a jump here, dig in with the ice axe, and you're done. Walk up to here, Snowy will use his nose to push a rock over. That Snowy does not know his own strength. Walk up to Snowy again. There'll be a little bit of story. And that's the end of the stage. And now we get yet more cutscene! Yay! And Tintin is still trying to convince himself Chang is not dead. He could not possibly have survived the, the accident. I'm with you, Tarki. He's dead. And Captain Haddock, for <laughs> oh the irony, proves to be the voice of reason here, telling Tintin to turn back. And it looks like Tintin is going to comply. Tomorrow we'll set off back. And that's where we're going to leave it for this part of Let's Play Tintin in Tibet. I've been Reniac. Thank you for watching. Join me next time when it's time for the, perhaps the most difficult level of the game, bar none. Certainly the most frustrating level of the game, bar none. In fact, I'm not going to even reveal what it is. You can just look forward to that surprise next time on Let's Play Tintin in Tibet. Bye for now. So in case you're wondering, that free one-up I mentioned is up here somewhere. But it's kind of tricky to get if you don't know what you're doing with it. What you're going to do is climb up here, slide down here, avoid the rolling boulder, which is really only there to serve as a way for you to get back up. Slide down here and you'll see this platform. First, go all the way to the, uh, to the left here to avoid the ball. Then you've got to stand on this stone, slide it down, jump to it, and there's your free one-up. However, in this stage, it's not as useful as it would be in other stages because, as I said, strict time limit, you'll probably lose a life getting to the exit now. And secondly, it turns out you're going to have a maximum of five lives. So yeah, that's just a little thing that if you want to get the life, I've got to show you how to get it, but I wouldn't recommend it. See you all next time.